In this MapSuite MVC Edition sample app walkthrough, we're going to show how you can easily switch between different types of background maps. As you'll see in the sample, we've got an overlay switcher here on the right with a list of several different background maps that we can select from. Uh, this list is made up of some of the more popular background maps that we use with the MapSuite, but it's not all of them. But let's just go through them real quickly so you have a basic understanding of what is possible for our different background maps. The first one we have is WMS Overlay. Um, WMS Overlay allows you to pull any background map from any WMS uh, uh, web server you may have access to on the internet. In this sample here, we're just pulling from a test WMS server we have set up here at ThinkGeo. The next one is a very popular background map from Google, and you can pull in Google Maps uh, to use within your application as well. And you can see once we switch to Google, we also have these four additional buttons that allow you to toggle between the different types of maps that Google supports. So if you wanted satellite imagery, you know, hybrid or physical maps and things of that sort. The next background map we're going to show is OpenStreetMap. Um, OpenStreetMap is an open source map data uh, set that allows anybody in the world to help contribute to the map data set and enhance the map uh, um, continually. We also have support for Yahoo Maps, Bing Maps, and our Think Geo World Map Kit as background maps. Another one that's uh, listed in here is a custom background map. So if you don't like any of the, uh, you know, the web map providers or any of the others and you have your own custom data set, uh, you can even take your own shape files and build your own background maps and switch between them and these other um, web map providers. With that said, let's dig a little bit into the, uh, the code now to show how you would set something like this up. In this sample, there really isn't much in the uh, controller code besides just returning the view, so we won't spend any time there, and we'll go directly to the view code. The view code's made up of some JavaScript and then also some uh, code down here that works with MapSuite. So let's, let's focus in on the, the code that works with MapSuite first. As we get started here, um, this first line is just setting up the map and its sizing and where it, where it fills into the page. The next is just setting the background of the map and then setting the current extent to tell the map where it zooms into. You'll notice these coordinates might be a little bit different than some you've seen in the past. And the reason why is because a lot of these mapping providers such as Google, Yahoo, and Bing have their maps in Spherical Mercator or also known as Web Mercator. And in that case, they use a different coordinate system than the typical longitude and latitude coordinates that you may see um, in other applications. So as you're dealing with current extents and these uh, background maps, keep in mind that they're in, a, in that coordinate system. That also brings us to map units, since these background maps are primarily in spherical mercator. The map units is going to be meter instead of, say, decimal degrees that you would see with the longitude and latitude map. This next section, section is where we set up some basic map tools. Uh, the overlay switcher, which I uh, uh, showed earlier with the radio buttons, is enabled here. But one other thing to note is we're, we're um, setting up an on-client-based overlaying changed event. And this is where we're telling it what JavaScript we want to run when somebody clicks on one of the radio buttons. And we'll take a look at that JavaScript in just a second. And finally, we add a few other uh, um, map tools for mouse coordinates and to add the PAM zoom bar and things of that nature. This section here is where most of the uh, setup is done for all of the overlays that we saw on the radio button list. So for setting up a WMS overlay, this is the code for that. And as you can see, this is just going to that sample WMS server we have set up here at ThinkGeo. Also for Google Maps, we've got one line there, OpenStreetMap, Yahoo, Bing, and our World Map Kit. So all of those web mapping providers are easily set up with just one line of code. And by default, you can set what type of map you want by um, setting whatever enumeration you have. So like here, if we switch to the Bing map, it, you can see that it's road. Or if it's Google, it's normal. And so those can be modified however you'd like for your application. Now, if you have your own data and you want to create your own background maps, you can do that just as easily. So in this uh, sample here, we've got a shape file of just the country outlines. And we just add that like we would any other shape file feature layer. And create the uh, the styling and the zoom level sets uh, as we'd like. And since this is actually in uh, a different uh, geodetic projection, to make it line up with the other map data providers, we're reprojecting it from geodetic to um, you know the Google projection, or also known as Web Mercator. So that's what this code here is doing. 
So it's very important to know as you, if you do have different background maps and you want to switch between them, uh, you want to make sure they're all on the same projection. It'll make it a lot simpler than having to deal with converting, you know, all of your, your coordinates from going back and forth from one background map to the other. So I would highly recommend that. All right, now that you've seen how we've set up the map, let's take a look at the client side JavaScript code and how the, um, the background map actually changes. So here we've got a JavaScript block that we have set up. And you'll see that we have this on layer changed event that we uh, wired up earlier with the, uh, with the overlay switcher. So when anybody clicks on a radio button, this is going to get fired and it's going to come in here and call this get element by ID, which then goes through and, and finally sets, uh, calls this map one dot set current Mac background type. And this is just a, uh, um, client API that will switch the map to the new type of background. So that's very useful if you want to do some uh, um, client-side operations with Map Suite. This code here is just appending the different buttons to the sample for the different types of maps that the web map provider uh, has, such as Google, you can see the four different types, Yahoo the three, and uh, Bing the other three. So with this, you can see how both the, uh, the map suite code on the server side or in the view there works with the client side code in the JavaScript. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions or post them on our discussion forums at thinkgeo.com forums. And thanks for watching.